Hello everybody, and welcome to the 40 and Slip Bedtime Stories. Tonight, one logger's encounter with Bigfoot in a remote area of Northern California. This sighting occurred quite some time ago, and I haven't told a lot of people. I was a logger for 15 years in and around Northern California, and I was a timber faller, probably five years out of that period. Timber falling puts you out in the really remote areas, and we were always the first guys in there to drop the timber. I started working a real thick area and began working my way back through the thick woods. My plan was to reach the very back portion of the sail and then cut my way back toward the logging road. The first day in there, I had the feeling of being watched, thinking it was just our boss spying on us so I gave no further thought to it. The next morning I spotted large tracks in the muddy areas. It had rained hard that night so the tracks were not sharp and they were not from a bear. Further into the woods, I came up on a flat spot in the faint trail that smelled so terrible that I almost gagged. It smelled like wet dog, a very filthy wet dog. Just past this spot is where I spotted what appeared to be human droppings. What was weird about the droppings is they were really huge, not trying to act like an expert on droppings, but the largest piece was about 18 inches long and 3 inches in diameter. This really freaked me out because there was nobody else in the area. My partner was working over the other slope and actually went out another way. The cruisers were out of this area about two months back. The stuff was fresh looking, about a day or two old, tops. We finished the sail and that was it. The area was really secluded with lots of deer sign. I had a habit of mapping and remembering really good spots for future deer hunting and prospecting spots that I would use during the winter layoff. This particular spot after logging was strictly off limits as it was part of the fruit grower company's land and after logging they would lock up the roads. It didn't matter how long you logged their property after a sale, it was shut down, and you had to stay out. Well, hunting season arrived and I breached the lock gate and snuck in there for a day of hunting. I took along my ever-present companion, Pappy, my hunting cow dog. Him and I were inseparable because he didn't know fear, and would attack a grizzly if you didn't keep him under control. He had a good nose and located many a deer that got away from me. Well, we got into the same area that I had spotted the droppings and Pappy went on a purple alert. His fur went straight up and he acted totally weird. He came to a halt and refused to go any further down the trail. I never saw him act quite this way. Just a hundred yards up the hill, I spotted movement. It was crouching down behind a buckbrush bush and it just crouched there staring at us. It was completely unnerving. I realized I was illegally in that area and that this might be another hunter or a DFG cop ready to bust my butt. Note here, guys were always getting busted for hunting on the California line or the Oregon line. It was just a bad spot, and it was so close to each border, it would be up to that game warden. While I had a Remington rifle with a scope, and not really wanting to aim a rifle at another hunter, I sort of swept the total area like I was looking for deer. What I saw chilled me to the bone. It was not human, and that's about all I can really say. To this day, it looked like a king-sized Eddie Munster. And it didn't look ape-like, but it sure as hell wasn't human. The eyes were what got my legs going because I wasted no time getting back to my truck and getting out of there. <laughs>